Welcome friends, in this video, let's discuss about carbon cycle and water cycle. These two cycles are the examples for gaseous cycle along with the nitrogen cycle, okay? Uh, this first let's discuss about the water cycle. Water cycle is also, also called as hydrological cycle and this water cycle is an important ecological factor which determines the structure and function of the ecosystem because it is very important basic component of the ecosystem. So this water cycle also support other nutrient cycles by way of two important characteristics. That means water act as a transportation agent and water is a universal solvent. Okay, it dissolves almost all the solutes that is available in the ecosystem. So by way of, by virtue of these two characteristics, water supports other nutrient cycle like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur and phosphorus cycles. Okay. And the water cycle is driven by solar energy. Solar energy because uh, with the help of sun's energy, water is evaporated into the atmosphere and plants involved in uh, transpiration it also contributes water droplets into the atmosphere. In atmosphere, it again forms the clouds and clouds uh, contribute water to the earth in the form of precipitation. Okay, And this cycle continues because of the support from the solar energy. Okay, And source of water on the earth, what are the sources? These include uh, ocean, lakes, rivers, soil, glaciers, snow fields and groundwater. These are all important sources of water on the earth. And this is the pictorial representation of water cycle. Here, the water that is existing uh, on, this, on the earth's surface uh, include ocean, freshwater storage, okay, uh, freshwater storage, rivers are all evaporated to the atmosphere with the sun's energy. This is the driving force, okay, uh, because of the evaporation and other uh, plant sources, uh, plants and forests provide uh, water to the atmosphere by way of transpiration, by, by, by the mechanism of transpiration. So, evapore transpiration contributes water to the atmosphere in the form of water droplets. And here on the atmosphere, water is condensed and it forms, it, it, it led to the formation of clouds and these clouds again contribute water uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the earth surface in the form of precipitation. Okay, this precipitation uh, comes back, uh, return back water uh, to the earth. Here in the earth, uh, it will be stored in the freshwater storage, ocean storage, and also some of the water is infiltrated into the earth, under, underground uh, the earth in the form of groundwater storage. Some of the groundwater is again uh, flow to the spring in the form of spring, okay, and it also flows. Uh, to the freshwater storage and some of the groundwater is also discharged into the ocean in the form of oceanic discharges and some of the snow also melts and run off uh, it is run off into the streams okay uh, and all these sources of water will again uh, contribute uh, water droplets to the atmosphere by way of evapotranspiration and this cycle goes on and on without any interruptions with the help of sun's energy and this is called water cycle so certain human activities are altering the water cycle this include agriculture so human beings uh, draw water from the groundwater and other surface water sources uh, for the for the for involvement of agriculture operations okay and this is altering the groundwater storage because we are drawing more and more water from the groundwater uh, it is very it, it, it reach into a stage where it is very instable because uh, the groundwater infiltration, natural infiltration is very less when compared uh, to the compared to uh, the ground, groundwater discharge. Okay, uh, And here the next thing is industry. Industry is also utilizing a lot of water. So this is also altering the water cycle. So and we are constructing them, obstructing the flow of water. This is also one of the interference and deforestation. So this deforestation uh, will interfere in the form of evapotranspiration and uh, attracting of clothes and other things. And it, it, we are also removing the groundwater from the wells. Okay, and more and more urbanization is utilizing lot of water. We are po polluting the lot of water. So in this way, human are interfering the in the water cycle. So this is very bad from the ecosystem point of view. So some of the important statistics related to water cycle. So water cycle is powered from the solar energy and 86% of the global 
evaporation occurs from the ocean okay and most majority of the evaporation is happening through the oceans 86 percent it is 86 percent and this evaporation reduces the temperature by the mechanism of evaporative cooling all your air coolers are worked are working uh, through this mechanism called evaporative cooling when the water evaporates it it, it it creates the cooling cooling effect so this is called evaporative cooling so this water cycle will sig is significantly reducing the temperature the temperature in the earth so the effect of evaporation in the greenhouse effects would lead to much higher surface temperature of 67 degrees celsius and a warmer planet so without this cooling the earth would be 67 percent sorry 67 degrees celsius so that would be very warmer to sustain the life on the earth so this is importance of water cycle so the next is carbon cycle so carbon uh, it is a minor constituent of the atmosphere the concentration of carbon on the atmosphere is uh, in the range of 384 ppm parts per million earlier before industrial revolution it was only 330 uh, approximately uh, around this but uh, after industrial revolution and the contribution of uh, carbon to the atmosphere through fossil fuels coal and natural gas and other industrial processes we increase the concentration of carbon in the atmosphere so this is an interference by the human beings in the carbon cycle and this carbon is very important for photosynthesis of the plants and based on which the whole life on the earth is sustained okay and carbon is also important uh, component of coal oil and natural gas and it is also important component of genetic material of the human beings that is uh, all the living beings that is deoxyribonucleic nucleic acid so this carbon cycle is very important for the ecosystem point of view so the carbon cycle uh, is carried out through two ways one is a short term carbon cycle and another one is long term carbon cycle in the short term carbon cycle the atmosphere carbon dioxide is fixed by the plants okay by the process of uh, uh, photosynthesis and this carbon is stored in the plants in the form of carbohydrates okay stored food and this stored food it is utilized by the primary consumers that is the next trophic level after the autotrophs so this, uh, this these animals utilize plants source as a food and then it this this carbon moves higher the trophic level as we discussed in our energy flow and this moves higher the trophic level and it carbon is also moving from one living beings to the another and carbon is contributed to the atmosphere through other mechanism called respiration so all the living beings respire and they contribute carbon dioxide to the atmosphere so after death of the plants and animals and the dead and decayed matter contribute carbon to the soil okay and this soil soil carbon organic carbon will be again utilized by the living plants for its growth and development and this cycle continues on and on this is called short term cycle in the long term cycle uh, in the long term cycle uh, the undecomposed organic matter in the pt layers of marshy soil are insoluble carbonates okay these insoluble carbonates in bottom sediments of aquatic system uh, is present okay this is undecomposed organic matter in pt layers so this this takes long term uh, to cycle because it is fixed on the earth's crust in the earth's crust uh, it is not available for immediate cycling for the carbon okay and it is available only through geological movements like lifting of the earth crust and when it is exposed to the surface it again weathering and erosion activities contributes to the carbon to the atmosphere until then it will be fixed so this is called long term cycle and another uh, carbon sources like uh, coals oil and natural gas these are due to burial of uh, undecomposed organic matter into the earth way back uh, millions of years ago and because of the uh, higher pressure and temperature and other geo uh, morphological factors it converted into fossil fuels it is available to the carbon cycle only when it is extracted in the form of uh, fossil fuels like petrol diesel okay and this is again released into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide thereby it 
it continues the carbon cycle. So this is called long term cycle because uh, this cycle takes millions of years to complete and this short term cycle because it is very continuous. So these two are the important components of the carbon cycle. So the human interference in the carbon cycle is very much evident and today's global warming, this global warming that is greenhouse gas effect and this is very lovely real example for interference of human beings in the biogeochemical cycles and its effects on human life because we are interfering in these biogeochemical cycles and it is having deleterious effect because it is creating to instability in the biogeochemical cycle. So this will, in the long term it may destroy the whole living beings on the planet itself. So industrial revolution by way of industries and use of fossil fuels modified in the carbon cycle and we are also directly emitting carbon to the atmosphere in the form of fossil fuels and indirectly by way of terrestrial and oceanic biosphere. Uh, here uh, in terrestrial biosphere we are uh, contribute contributing uh, towards carbon emission by way of deforestation and oceanic bio biosphere where, where the destruction of uh, uh, coral reef because it is the basic foundation for oceanic ecosystem the coral reefs okay these are co uh, considered as evergreen forests of the ocean because of the richness in uh, living beings okay and the atmosphere in the agriculture operation we we burn the crop residues rather than decomposing uh, and converting into the organic matter. This is also contributing to the uh, the carbon cycle and soil erosion. When there is a soil erosion, the the soil carbon is washed into the water sources like uh, lakes and oceans reservoirs. This is also contributing to the uh, carbon carbon. Okay, and this is we are interfering in the uh, carbon cycle as well. So thank you, thank you for watching. Please watch my other videos about environment and ecology here. Click here. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for watching.